still setting up here. Mic check, mic check. All right. All right, so this is a first for me, so thanks for bearing with me. And uh, doing Q&A on appliance repair. Uh, clients business answer any questions um, if you're just a DIY DIY -er, do it yourself yeah DIY -er. um, you know here to field any questions you may have it's something I don't know it could be somebody in the chat that does know that can help out um, here we go I wish I could, I could figure out how to do a screen share in this thing because there's a lot of stuff I want to show. Live chat, live redirect. All right, if you guys can hear me, uh, give us a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up if you can hear me. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Got one thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up if you can hear me. Hey, what up? Up North Sales. Awesome. So you attack or you uh you, you flip? What you do? Nice. 20, 30 a month side hustle. <laughs> I love it. Side hustle. That's some people's primary hustle. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, they um, it's a nice business, man. I, it's funny because uh, I think I feel like this business is um so bulletproof, and the only weakness though is inventory. Which is good, you know. A lot of businesses, you know, their weaknesses, you know, customers. You know, that's usually it. that's what takes most businesses under not have enough customers. I think we got more than enough customers. It's just um, inventory, trying to have supply constantly. You know, trying to find, you know, because there's no used appliance factory. You know, <laughs> you can't like you know go to Whirlpool. Hey, give me a used appliance. Build me some used appliances. Um, so we are constantly out there just fishing trying to find appliances, getting what we need uh, to flip and to resell. Um, so I got a, I, I got a nice little, this on my inventory here. You can see it. Oh, I wish I could post it. It'd be cool if I could keep this like this. Um, actually, I probably don't want to put my laptop on that thing. Actually, I can probably mount it on here. Keep your man to hold it, I guess. So, um, good morning. How you doing, Patricia? So, yeah, it is, this, you know, it's a great business. Um, you get to meet a lot of interesting people. Just talking about the uh, customers, you know, you, you meet so many people from so many different backgrounds. Like, it's funny, a lot of people will, you know, have to go to like a networking event to get to. Uh, meet other people and you know share things with each other and we our customers are our network you know you go and you talk to people that know different things like plumbers like most of my people are far out like plumbers electricians and stuff like that they're people that were customers you know and i'm like oh you, you're a plumber you know you see they set up you see a nice truck like, all right yeah you know i can send some customers your way and uh that's it's it's, it's, an, it's an awesome business um i do want to share just little things this is all this little tools to help you out so this is my um this is a this is designed for the raised beds so it goes under beds to make beds higher and i use the pop-up machines oh, i use the pop-up machines i've used it as a bucket one time <laughs> I, was, I didn't have my bucket with me so so oh, let me use that and i use this to like to drain a hose into um simple man i think i got this from family dollar maybe like uh I think I paid too much, but it's like 10 bucks, I think, for two of them. Um, and to me, this should be like a dollar, but whatever. Um, it's paid off, though. I pop machines up on it. It's very nice. All right, we got a question. All right. So for direct drives, when, okay, I got to, I got to, when I cherry pick, I look for lid switch, broke lid switches. Easy. You know, you're underneath and you see that it's, it's open up like a clam. You, you put, the, you touch the lid. Yeah, broke lid switches. Uh, and if they have sitting water, I mean, it's kind of gross from a whole set of sitting there a long time. But you know, birds out there fighting. <laughs> um, but sitting water will be also, you know, it's a, it's, it's a sock stuck in a pump. But number one overall, man, try to find um, try to find broken lid switches for the washers. For dryers, I would say I will look for open the door, door switches. See if the door switch is broke. Um, and if there's a lot of lint in the back, because that means it's probably just a fuse or a heating element. Um, so that, that's, that's what I would look for at wholesalers. Uh, do you have contact refer? Uh, I don't know anybody. If anybody is in the chat here, that's in the Maryland area. Um, got a customer for you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody in Maryland. So, but uh, yeah, so I love man. It's funny man. I'm going to wholesalers. It's like. It's like my kids going to Toys R Us. You know, you get excited. Remember, you're a kid, you go to Toys R Us, you see all these toys. You're like, oh, sweet. <laughs> I want all of them. It's like that. You go to the appliance, like warehouse to pick out uh, machines to, to flip. Man, you just be like, oh. It always turns into a hangout because you go there and you get you get cool with the guys. You stop and just, just, just you know, chit chat and stuff. 
And uh, but man, you, you see all these appliances, you're like, oh, you want all of them. <laughs> this what's up. Uh, so, uh, hey, what up, Jermaine? Hey, that's my brother, guys, my bro. <laughs> um, wholesaler. So, why I feel for, for wholesaler? So, this is there is uh, different sources to get your inventory from. So you can go to uh, Facebook marketplace and tap into getting them directly from uh, consumers themselves, which is kind of a, a slow pace. Cause you, you're doing onesie twosies, you know, you got to drive away and pick up just one or two machines. Um, but they're cheaper and they're fresh. And usually it's like a, a small, small little issue, you know, and you can test them right then and there. Cause a lot of times they're already, they're already hooked up. Um, another one is if you go to now, this is another trick when you sell machines or you're out driving and you see that uh, big box truck and they got it open and you see them delivering a washer and dryer. Those guys will sell you their um, a lot of those guys. They'll sell you the returns. So, you know, technically they have to take them back to the warehouse, um, but a lot of them will sell them to you. Uh, they'll sell them usually. Um, but but the, the issue with those those guys is a lot of times they'll see a pretty machine and thinking it should sell for a whole bunch of money because it's pretty. But in this business, the prettier machine, the more expensive most likely it is to fix, right? Or the bigger the issue is. I, I, I like the ugly beat up one, you know, you get those cheap. So um, the Lowe's, the Lowe's guy, the Home Depot delivery guys, those are the guys you can hunt down too. Um, you out and give them your car or whatever, and you can get good machines from them. Um, another one is the wholesale warehouses. Uh, I know here in Georgia, usually they're like from 60 to $75, something like that per machine. Uh, that's the most expensive way to buy your inventory, but you get it all at once. You get it in bulk. It's a good way to fill your, your, um, your showroom. Um, if you have a store, so, um, you know, so there's different levels and basically you just going to tap in each, each one of those sources. Um, also now the, the best way is to put an ad for a free haul away. Um, again, that has the pros and cons too, because you, you can get junk and you promise to go get it. So you still have to get it. Um, or you can cherry pick a little bit. You can have a customer maybe send you a picture um, and you can decide to either charge to pick it up or you can say, hey, for, you, know, you know, oh, that particular brand, I, I charge because we we're overstocked in those machines um, over something that you want. You'd be like, hey, I'm on my way to get it right now. <laughs> so you've got a lot of people that will... Um, uh, that would just want, just want the machine gone because it's not something you can put in a trash can or throw in the curb. It ain't that hard to move. So, uh, Patricia asks, how often dryer vents should be clean? Too many stories. Um, I would say once a year, but if you are, and, and I would say once a year just because, like, um, or okay, this is actually this would be a best way of doing it. Every time, just remember, every time you change the oil on your vehicle, check your vents. You have to attach it to something to remember um, because it's one of those things like you don't think about. I mean, we've all got so much going on in our lives, right? It's one of those things that you don't think about, and it's only an issue once there's a problem, right? And then once there's a problem, you don't want to wait to that, you know, because at that point, you, you blow in the heating element and you messed up your dryer. Uh, a red flag that you need it done is it takes multiple cycles to clean out your uh, your dryer. And I, I do actually I do have a video on that. Um, you can check on my page. But uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I probably need, I'm gonna do a video series on dryer vents, like strictly dryer vents, how to prevent it. I got a little bit of information on each um, on different videos. Um, but like putting a, um, like a, a brick behind a brick or a rock or a two by four, uh, you know, two, uh, you know, six inch, whatever piece of board behind your dryer would keep it from being pushed against a wall and smashing that vent hose. Um, also inspecting, um, the vent outside, you know, turning on your dryer, make sure that flap is open, clean it out. It, the, the most important thing really is the outdoor flap. A lot of times lint will build up on it and your flap will stay open bringing moisture in and when that moisture goes in that tube all that lint will collect on your tube um so make sure you have a flap on your um dryer vent 
on the outside of your house. And if it vents through the roof, um, now with roof vents, people think you got to climb a ladder to get to the roof. No, nah, you just go through your attic and you the pipe is all connected. Sometimes a screw, sometimes there's a screw and um, aluminum tape around it. But it's easy to, you know, basic tools and it takes off and you can look at the vent and there's a screen on here. And sometimes that screen will be clogged and you just take a brush and just brush it off. Um, a big red flag is if you have a, a roof vent, uh, if you have water, if you the the, the where your uh, exhaust hose connects to the wall, if there's water in there, then usually your vent is clogged going through the roof because what's happening is that moisture is going up and it's hitting that clog, and so all the moisture stays in there and comes back down, kind of like rain. <laughs> it's a, the, the lint's like clouds <laughs> and they get soaked up with so much rain. It, it's just like cloud clouds work. So I hope that answers your question. And let's see, we got some more questions here. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that like button, man. It helps the algorithm. It helps uh, YouTube know that this may be, you know, a helpful uh, series, a helpful channel for you guys too. So how often do you, okay, okay. Uh, best place for direct drive. Okay, so the best part for, for the best uh, place to get aftermarket parts. I uh, like you said, Luna parts, man. I, I love Luna parts. <laughs> That's fine. I use aluminum parts, man. I like them. Um, but the best place, so depends on the part. So if you want like a new aftermarket part, I will go Amazon, right? Or your parts store, right? Your local parts store is good. They'll be they cost a little bit more, but it's convenient, right? Like if you want it right now, you can go get it and your local parts store will have it. Um, other than that, cheap and aftermarket will be Amazon because Amazon vets their vendors a lot better than like eBay would. Um, so if people have bad, like Amazon will cut a vendor like that. Believe me, I know. <laughs> Amazon will cut a vendor like that. So you need to, um, so if you want a good aftermarket part, Amazon, and then I would say eBay. Now, eBay is excellent for used parts so i i've um i've had a used part business i kind of backed off a little bit because of the, the, the time that it's involved with it but amazon ebay is an awesome source for used parts um and there's a and go by ratings now you know make sure you go by somebody with the rating because sometimes you'll have a guy who's just flipping parts who don't check them or anything so um yeah that's that's my answer for that uh let me try to Oh, no problem, Patricia. Let's read your uh, LG dryer, no codes, no heat. All right, so if you got an LG dryer with no codes, no heat, um, that is a very open ended question, but <laughs> um, you have to check stuff. But I would say uh, if you have no heat whatsoever, so there's a difference between no heat, right? So if, if you turn on within like let's say 20 seconds with nothing in it. If there's, if it's ice cold, then yeah, you have an issue. Then you need to check the uh, fuses. Uh, really codes are secondary to me. Like there's a lot of things that codes don't catch, you know, which, which is weird, but uh, yeah, cause it, it's, it's been plenty of times I worked on stuff and there's no codes whatsoever. Um, but yeah, so you want to go and look at um, open it, open it up. I've got videos on uh, I think I, ha I might have an LG on there. Uh, if not, just message me. Um, but yeah, you can go on uh, my page and look at some videos on our LG dryers. Um, but again, so if there's no code, so if you don't want to open it up, another thing too, you have to check the electrical. Um, so a lot of times, especially if there's no code, sometimes you're not getting enough power. Um, again, that's what requires a use of a voltmeter, which you know I've got links in my page on that so you, what you can do is you go on my page and it allows you to search in my page and you put in there like vote meter and the, the, the video should show up that covers that um but you need to check the voltage to make sure you're getting 240 volts because you can get 120 volts which is enough to run the motor but not another 120 which is enough to run the motor and the heating element so you need 240 so uh sometimes those those switches go bad in your um on, on, in your house so uh, McCombs is a good, yeah. McCombs supply is good too. I like them. You know, a lot of those guys, McCombs and Luna Parts, a lot of those guys are actually real parts stores. And so, 
So this is how part stores work, right? They get so they buy their pulse parts in volume from the manufacturer or the manufacturer supplier. Uh, so the more volume they do, the cheaper the parts are for them, the more money they make. And so what they'll do is they'll have like, you know, a, a part store, let's say a, a brick and mortar part store and charge a certain amount of certain charge retail prices and to help get their volume up. They'll have they'll have a, a different name such as Luna Parts <laughs> uh, on uh, Amazon to help with their volume to help move parts. So that's that's how that works. So sometimes it's the same parts that you get from the parts store is my point there. Um, all right. Uh, up north sales question: testing washer and dryers. Test every cycle or just maintain. Yep, sure. General cycle same for washing. Just testing two cycles. Uh, if I understand your question right, you want to know how do you test machines after you um, get a fix, I guess, up north sales. So what I do, my testing process when I refer to machine, even when I deliver a machine to a customer, um, I want to fill it, agitate, and then I skip this. I just turn it off and go right to rinse. Uh, excuse me, not rinse. Go right to uh, spin. So if it fills, stops, starts to agitate, and pumps water out and spins, machine's good. <laughs> that covers like 90% of anything that might be might be wrong with it. Um, so especially like at a customer house. Nah, that's another. See, you guys give me ideas. So that's another video I need to make. Um, so especially at a customer house, because if you do a delivery, right? And let's say I, this has happened to me, man, where a hose come loose or, you know, I, I take it off of the dolly and it, it slams, and, you know, I slammed on the ground by mistake one time and cracked a tub. Um, and you get in there and you fill it. Or if you did like a lid switch repair, you had to plug the lid switch back in or you pinch the pressure hose. That happened to me my, when I was a rookie. I pinched a pressure hose and flooded somebody's house one time. Um, so, yeah, you always test to make sure it fills, stops filling. Uh, agitates and drains, and especially when it drains. So you listen for the drain too, because when it drains, you want to see, make sure the customer's drain on their house isn't clogged. Because you hear, you hear it filling up. I heard that before. I, that's I like I know that sound like anything now. When I hear it filling up, because it'll fill all the way to the top and then it's explode out and leak everywhere. And if you don't check that on your delivery. Um, they'll call you and say, hey, your washer's leaking. And then you get there, you're like, no, your drain is clogged. <laughs> so I've caught that a lot of times, man, and that saves a lot of damage and liability too, man. So uh, I was quoted 240 for a dryer vent cleaning. Do you agree? 249? It depends. Where's your vent? Is the vent out the side of your house or through the roof? Uh, if it's through the roof, then that's that sounds... Yeah, because man, you gotta do. You're going to the attic and you're sweating in the heat, or, or any, I mean, they might go on a roof physically. Depends on who it is. Um, so two forty for a roof vent, yes. Um, two forty nine uh, depends. Like if it's on the side of your house and you can walk to it, um, I would say that's a little much. But if it's the side of your house and you have, they had to get a ladder to get to it, then yes, it's gonna be more. So. Alex. Uh, Alex, girl, and kids. You're welcome. Okay, most obvious sign of a faulty actuator. Uh, it fills and doesn't agitate. Uh, or you hear it clicking a lot. Click, 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 click. Um, but to be honest with you, and again, what I usually do is, this is a nice thing about uh, selling... Um, use machines, you have almost unlimited access to parts because you have so many parts. So usually I always have an actuator with me. And if I think it's the actuator, I'll just change it out because it's so easy, such an easy change. Um, I'll change it out and test it and see, you know, and usually go from there. So, oh, inspection. Uh, hey, Dave G you said test everything. Yeah. Um, but sometimes, I mean, it's time, you know what I mean? You can't sit there and watch, you know, for 30 minutes and watch a, a washer go through the whole cycle, you know? Um, but for dryers, I do, and now I test dryers. I use my dryer like on 60 minutes and if it goes like 10 minutes then I'm like, okay, it's good. And it's hot. Um, the only, um, 
problem you can run into is if your timer's broke and you know and it keeps going. So sometimes you miss that with that with that type of short uh, test. If you're an science technician needs a ladder. Yep, two fifty. <laughs> yeah, two fifty. <laughs> okay, it needs a ladder. Um, what I would do is the only be, be prepared for uh, spending more than two fifty if he feels like you don't have a flap. You know, if, if he needs to change the duct outside the uh, the vent, because uh, especially if you don't have a flap or if it's damaged or something like that, because um, that could that's you know, uh, especially if it's already clogged, that can definitely be a bird's nest in there. Uh, and bird's nest usually happen because there's no flap, you know. And you can have like sometimes they have mesh to. I don't like the mesh though because that thing clogs up too. But you just need a the, the little door. I know you got to close all the way, but close mostly just to keep the birds up. All right, guys, don't forget to keep hitting the like button. I appreciate it, man. That uh, uh, allows YouTube to award me with more views. So I keep spreading this information. Anybody from uh, up north, Ottawa? Are you from the like northeast? I'm, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and I wonder like the how is it up in the north with the appliance? Because like with the cold, man, like <laughs> like you gotta like you do delivery, you gotta, you gotta battle through snow, and man, that's gotta be rough. That and then also like how do you like especially if you gotta keep any machines outside, like old machines or whatever. Man, you gotta have like tub issues like with tubs cracking because it, it, it's the water ices up i mean you gotta actually gotta do extra like drain them and stuff but this warner man anybody from the up, up, up north So just another tip. Oh, hang. Uh, oh, heated garage. Oh yeah, you got to. I guess. Man, it's gonna be rough, man. <laughs> so I'm 44 years old, and I moved to uh, Georgia when I was 21. So I spent, you know, almost half my life in the cold winters of Buffalo, New York, Lake Effect snow, and I do not miss it at all. It's inhumane to live in the Northeast. <laughs> man, freezing cold, the, the snow. It's not even the cold. It's the snow, man. How to deal with that. Jeez. I remember shoveling my driveway, and two hours later, snow will be right back there, man. You know, the, the salt issue. Like my truck. I don't know if y'all seen my uh, I did a quick little post about my truck, man. Bought my truck in 2012. It's got uh, almost uh, 280,000 miles on it now. Bought it with 30,000 miles. And like no rust, you know, but this thing was up north. I had to get rid of it a long time ago because, man, that, that's the salt and stuff just eats away at, at your, your vehicles. It's crazy. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, speaking of, let's speak about tools, tools for the trade. Uh, I had somebody message me on one of my videos and said, man, I wish I had a pickup truck so I could flip appliances. It, yeah, it, there's other tools. Um most cars can tow about a thousand pounds. Um, so your trailer, if you get a light trailer that can carry, let's say you get a trailer that can carry like two machines, um, that may be five hundred, maybe half. Some some really light ones, you could get maybe a really light trailer that's about two hundred fifty pounds, maybe Harbor Freight. But half of it will be your trailer, uh, so that's still at least five hundred pounds. Uh, a washer uh, weighs about one hundred twenty pounds. A dryer weighs about a little less than 100, maybe 80 pounds. Um, so you can carry at least two machines. I mean, you can make a lot of trips, but that's like the bare minimum. Um, get you a car, put a hitch on it. Uh, I know U-Haul, um, a lot of the big U-Haul centers, the, the main U-Haul service centers, they'll put a hitch on your car for you, and it's usually about 100 bucks too. So there's a will, there's a way, man. <laughs> Shoot. 
And be honest, a trailer is, is way better than a pickup truck. I gotta tell you that. Then you know, you kind of lift up machines in the back of your, your pickup truck. But there's a will, there's a way. So you got that, you got um U-Haul, man. If you like, you know, U-Haul rents out their pickups for twenty dollars. I'm sure after it's all said and done, it's probably like 40, 50 bucks a day, but um that, that's the way of doing it too. Uh, my limit for distance on delivery. Um, so it depends where you live, right? So I lived in New Orleans for a year. In New Orleans, everything's 10 minutes away. And it's weird because when you go 20 minutes away, you're like, man, this is fire. <laughs> but in Georgia, everything is at least 30 to 45 minutes away. Uh, you know, it just takes time because everything's so spread out. And so an hour is nothing to me now here, but it's funny. 20 minutes in New Orleans felt like forever. Um, so I, uh, my, my, my distance is an hour and a reason for that, really 45 minutes. Yeah. I tell people 45 minutes, but hour is the max. Cause you say hour to Nate. Oh, I'm only hour. You know, they push it. So, excuse me. Um, the reason for that. Now you got to think now, cause the, this, this is what it is. The reason for that is, warranties right so if you warranty your machine now we're talking about flipping so if you're talking about repairs i'll go a little further repairs is cool too but i always keep in mind having to go back and keep that in your pricing too always think about a second trip um so if i do a, a delivery uh if it's an hour then i'll say okay that's two hours round trip but i keep in mind usually if you have to go back or you're doing a delivery there's something in between right or you do that delivery and then there's something else like a repair that you have to do. As long as you have a schedule, there's going to be something. It is, it's just the way of the universe, man. It's always going to be something else in that area that makes it worth it. So, um, so usually for me, 45 minutes is my max. Uh, but depends on where you're at in your business, right? If you're growing, man, you got to do a two hour trip. You got to do a two hour. I've done, I've, I've taken, I've been to Macon. So Macon, Georgia, I think it's two hours two and a half, maybe further, maybe three. I can't remember. But uh, I've delivered a, a stackable out there, um, but it was a $500 sale, right? But huge risk, right? Because if something goes, I, I think I've done, been out there like two or three times uh, throughout the years. And that business was slow. And I'm like, hey, 500 bucks, uh, hey, <laughs> four hours round trip, uh, they earn $500 or 400, four hour, or use that four hours to sit at home and make nothing, right? Um, but it's a risk because, you know, you got to think about the warranty going back, you know, and you got to honor it. You got to honor it, man. And another thing, too, is, like, if you, uh, depending on the type of person you are, if you are busy or if you think, like, man, like, let's say you go out two hours, man, I'm not going to feel like going back out. If they call me something's wrong, I got to go fix that thing. Do I want to go back out there? That's the question you have to ask yourself before you say yes to that delivery. So, uh, more questions. Moonchild, appreciate you. Awesome advice on the trailer. Uh, any thoughts on what I can do with untested units? I don't have time. Desire to fix. Oh, woo. Oh, oh. No, nah, dude. Okay. Up north auto sales. I was reading. It. No th thoughts on what I can do to, for untested units. I don't have time. Nah, bro. You got time. You don't want to. None of us want to fix Samsung front loaders, Samsung top loaders, uh, cabrioles with the, 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 the bearing issues, <laughs> glass top stoves. <laughs> Nobody. We got time. We don't want to. I get it, though. Yeah, I'm thinking suck. <laughs> um, those are best. If you have a parts business, to part them out or run them to the scrapyard or both. Yeah. No, no Yeah, man. That's, those are oof. Um, quick flip when making a delivery. Yep. Yeah, man. Yep. So, and then, Hey, if you go far, like make it, so, like I say, you need to take a, uh, back to the delivery conversation. Let's say you need to go further out for a delivery. Um, may, you have nothing else going on. Make it worth it. Yeah. Look for flips, man. Like we go on YouTube, go on Facebook marketplace, see if you can pick something up while you're out there, you know? 
or hey, go out there and do some marketing. Like, hey, you know, go to par- old school, man. That's how I, I, when I got started. Go to apartment complexes, the, the mailboxes, put your cars up. Be amazed, man. You get. I'll have people call me. Like one lady called me and said, "Your business card was sitting in my center console of my car for two years." <laughs> And I remember it was in there, and I decided to call you because I need a washer. And she got it from an apartment complex mailbox uh, that I, I stuck up. <laughs> you never know. You never know, man. Small effort, big reward, man. Small efforts, big rewards. So, yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna stay on here for an hour, guys. So we at, we're at the 35 minute mark. Uh, I was encouraged to do to do more live videos, which makes sense. So I'm trying to do more and more live videos. Um, I'm gonna try to do. I just thought about it. Like I got something like this one. I need to. It's, I need to service it. I, I got this. This is. Um, I had a customer that moved decided to move out of the country, and I, I sold this to him. But now it has a click, clicking noise in there. I don't know what it is. So I gotta take it apart. So that's something I could be doing while we're chit chatting. So I'm gonna do that on the next one. And uh, yep. So hey, how do you recommend getting insurance before doing appliance flipping? I currently have insurance for repairs as well. Uh, your repair insurance should cover it. Your your repair insurance should cover it. Um, but yeah, if I mean you starting out, like if you're starting out, you don't have a lot of money, right? Um, insurance and insurance is not an option for you. Then you have to keep yourself. Um, I wouldn't say as a business like. Case in point, if Joe and Jane have a washer they want to get rid of and I decide to buy it as a for my house, I don't think, you know, I guess you can sue them if something happens, but you're less likely to blame them. Right. So if if you don't can't afford insurance, uh, I would keep yourself in a position as a person with a washer that just wants to sell it other than a business that's selling machines. Um, I use Hitchcock's insurance. I'm going to write it here. Let me figure out how to get some referral money from Hitchcock. Hitch, no, how do you spell it? Hitchcock. Hang on, let me me see. I use Hitchcock's insurance and Hitchcock's, his Cox. His Cox. That's hilarious. Get your mind out the gutter. Whoever's thinking something. (laughs) I typed right there, his cock insurance. That's the one I recommend. Um, that's one I've used. They're super cheap. Um, they do. Their, I've had a claim, and they they honor the claim. There's no deductible. Um, I pay fifty dollars a month for my insurance. Um, can't beat that. Uh, one thing I do recommend, because number one, they're online, right? So that's a nice play because you kind of play with the numbers to, to you know, like, whatever you want your rates instead of having to talk to somebody on the phone. And so um, you can go online and also keep in mind, like, because when I did it and I did my insurance the first time, I, I put all these years in business and it, it was higher. And the guy I said, like, why is it so higher? I'm experienced. You know, I think that would, you guys will like that. And they said, well, the longer you've been in, so if you get insurance today, we still have to cover you from, let's say you, let's say you started, let's say you've been, to, let's say you started your business five years ago. We've got to cover you from five years ago, also from like any other liability claims or some other work that you've done. We have to cover that too. So keep that in mind, food for thought. You know, if you want it cheaper, you know, the longer you've been in business, the the more is it's going to be. So uh, next insurance, okay. Quick and affordable. Yep, that's affordable, man. That's that's the key. <laughs> and don't be afraid to make claims, man. Like I'm in a Facebook group with a appliance techs and guys on there. They scared. Oh my way. I'm saving it for the big dude. Insurance is there to cover your butt. Make them claims, man. Hell, they drop you. Get another one. You know, I mean, sometimes it's hard to get another one, but make a claim. As long as you make like a claim every month or something. But if you like been been a year or so and you you have you know make and use them. That's what they for. That's what you're paying for. So I had one where I delivered a front load washer and dryer set, uh, second floor, uh, uh, upstairs laundry room. And a week goes by and the guy called me and said, hey, man, your machine flooded my house. 
I was like, what? You know, for my first thing is, hey, check the drain holes. Maybe it popped out, you know. Um, and he did all that. So I went over there. And basically, the tub, the, the this was um, uh, Maytag. What's the name of those things? Those Maytag front loaders. They're usually brown. Like, the top is brown and the, it's white. And the controls on top, but it's a front loader. I've got the name of I can't remember it. Oasis? No. I've got the name of those things. And uh common issues with those, the water valves stick. And so when the machine is off, it still fills. And so that thing kept filling and it flooded their house. Hitchcock Insurance covered it. They had guys come out, repaint it, and, and you know, it, it was cool. It was no customer service issue. They have a customer bash me online or nothing. It, it was, you know, they did they did right. So it was awesome. Uh, okay, I'm a little behind. Let me sure. Okay, any thoughts on what I can do on my Montgomery Ward washer that doesn't want to completely spin? I can look that one up. Montgomery Ward. I never heard of that one. Let's see, what this thing looks like. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's old. Holy smokes. It's brown, dude. <laughs> I mean, your cabinet is brown? That's an old machine. Like, tan brown. Like, ooh, wee. Um, so, not spinning. <laughs> um, definitely not, probably not worth calling somebody out for. I mean, unless you're really married to that machine. Um but that would definitely, I mean, the, the technology is the same, though, even though it's an old, old machine. There's a lid switch on that thing. So I'll check the lid switch. Uh, it, that would just require checking, man. You just got to uh, check. Uh, if you're humming, then that means the electrical is fine. Then that means there's a mechanical issue somewhere. Like there's a, a blockage somewhere. There's something stopping something from spinning um, or your motor is gone. So that, 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 that's, that's not an easy answer. Um and it'd be tough to find a tech that will service that because I mean you got to get an old school tech to get. I want don't have no young guys come to your house. <laughs> Montgomery Ward, it's got to be an old guy that's like probably retired and still doing it on the side. That's the guy you need to fix that. They closed down. Yeah, Montgomery Ward. I can't get help from Montgomery Ward. Yeah. Oh, so 15 or 16? You sure? Huh. Okay. Well, if it let me see. I mean, it looks like a like a whirlpool type setup. Well, I see online are old though. If you could um Go to my my Facebook page and send me a picture of it. That could probably help you better. I need to see. I need to physically see it because that tells me. That'll tell me uh, what it is. So, um, A Team Appliance on Facebook. Oh, there goes a store. <laughs> uh, spray painting. I would use. Appliance paint for Walmart, and sometimes I get ah okay. So let me bust up my arsenal. We talking about now. We're talking about painting cabinets, right? So hang on. I'm mean, all excited, man. Talking about painting. <laughs> so, painting. So, I got, I've, I've tried everything, right? So, number one, hands down, the, this is the most convenient spray paint, right? And I use this kind, man, Rust Oleum, because this nozzle never gets clogged, man. I always get clog issues. They say you got, I don't know, there's so many tricks you got to do to keep the other ones from getting clogged, but this one is smooth. It paints, it goes on smoother. To me, it feels like a better paint. Um, 
So I do got a video too with my, my two boys on it. We was in Home Depot picking out paints. I talked about this brand right here. So I always get the gloss. Um, so second uh, is my paint gun, right? I don't have my canner on here, but this is my paint gun. I have a compressor. Uh, this is for, this is the best. To be honest, this is the better quality, right? And especially for a huge surface. So if you got a big surface, like if you only like if you got like a bleach tray that's rusted or something like that, then you know you you, you sand it down. The the fresh spray can is a quick, you know, or even a dryer top, just real quick. Um, but if you have a lot to spray paint, like if you got a bunch of machines, like sometimes I'll keep a bunch of cabinet stuff in a row, and then I'll hit this. The negative with this is cleaning it. It's a pain. So. <laughs> Uh, I, hate, I hate cleaning these things. So you got to clean it. It's time, right? Because we don't have enough time. You try to spend time with your family. You try to run a business. You know, time, time, time. So this is best, though. Shh. It sprays on even. It's, it's, this is awesome. Um, you can even get the... Uh, I think I got this used something. But, but you can even get the little Harbor Freight ones. Sometimes they don't sell for $10. The little small ones. Because you don't need a big, huge one. Um, so that... And I used... Appliance paint. Got this from Home Depot. So this is what I put in the paint gun. So like that. And then another one is I don't can't find another part to this. Look at these. And they come with a a little canister. I don't know if you can see it or not. They attach to it. the canister holds paint and it squeeze and these things are saturated with paint from inside the can. And you can kind of roll. Uh, not a really good look on it, but I mean, this, you know, if you're in a pinch or something like that, and or you, you, you run a spray paint, this is nice. This is my backup. Um, and also, you can take just a regular roller, but it doesn't look as good. Like, it usually bubbles up. It has like a, a like an orange peel look to it. So, uh, oh, there's the model number. Okay, let's, let's see. Let's see. I got a model number for this off brand. Help a brother out. I didn't bring a water. I'm, I'm parched. No, it's not showing up. I have a door here. Oh, okay. This is, this is like a. Think from Mexico? Lavador hair. No, Lavador is washer. Lavadora. Oh, it's a. Okay, this is a part store. I say Mexico, I know a lot of Whirlpool has a factory down there, so because not all Hispanics are from Mexico, they're all around the world South America, Spain. <laughs> uh, can't find it. Let's try, let's try Sears. This is if I can share my screen with you guys. I'm gonna figure that out. It's not pulling up. And the clouds getting dark, but the rain out here. Let me see. I'm gonna try to sixty. I don't know what this says. Sixty-five, try sixty. Man, that thing isn't pulling up. Let's see. Okay, so is it like a uh, a compact, like a little white compact? I wish I could share pictures on here. Uh, it's like a little white compact washer, like almost like a portable. I see some of those by Montgomery Ward. Up North Auto Sales, man. Appreciate you, brother. What's this stuff? Thanks for the love, JP. <laughs> Crazy, man. Thanks for the love. And yes, if uh, these tips are helpful to you, donations are appreciated.
So, uh, and don't forget to hit the, the like button, help the algorithm so we can keep this going. So, um, yeah, so that's that's Swim Out on Paint. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. I think we have the tools I can show you guys. Oh, so how about this? How many of you guys hate these? Raise your hand. <laughs> the stiff ones. This, these. Hate them. These are cause for so many sweaty shirts. <laughs> uh, cut hands. And time wasted, right? So these are the stiff ones. And sometimes you have a customer that says, uh, oh, I, you know, I bought a new one. Can you add it on? Or I'm going to buy one. Um, or if you like, with, when I deliver machines, I actually include um, these, but you know, I've used ones, they're clean. Um, but if you um, sell these to upgrade or whatever, a customer says they're going to get a new one, highly recommend the old flex ones. So I'm going to get that flex one. This is my truck. Un momento, four, four, four. All right, so here's a flexible one, right? So this is nice because if uh, it's easy to put on because it's flexible, it moves around. Um, also, if for some reason, now this is a bad thing, but this happens with either one. If that dryer gets pinched, this is a side view. If that dryer gets pinched between a wall and the dryer, this can happen, right? But guess what? You can easily fix it. Like you notice that you pull your dryer out, guess what happens? Uh, magically, right? With this, not so much. <laughs> With these, I'm not going to break this, but uh, first, they're, they're very stiff, though. They're very rigid, so I'll give it that. Um, but it's not a lot of forgiveness. So these are good for if there's room, right? Or if you do like a side mount. I'm doing this from the side. Like you, you mount it sideways. Um, but uh, Or if you or if it's direct, which is rare, but if it's direct, you know, you cut them. But once these things pinched, they stay pinched. <clears throat> so that's a negative with those. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, dragging it. Um, but yeah, ooh, I hate seeing those things coming. <laughs> the stiff ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to go, man. All right, let's see. BK from the Rockies. How do you figure out what parts to buy and keep in stock? I have a hell of a time trying to figure out what to buy in bulk from Amazon, eBay. Okay, so um, it depends. Like if you, if you just do repairs or if you're flipping. So the best thing. So so we you're flipping and you're getting mostly direct drives. You want to stock up on couplers. I bought my couplers directly from China. Uh, I went to Alibaba and bought a whole box, man. I think like three hundred of them things, man. Um, I bought a huge box of them. Uh, but you can go to um, yeah Amazon. You can buy them in bulk. But the, the, the coupler, the motor couplers, <clears throat> and it, especially starting off, though, you, you don't want to be careful getting in bulk because you want to choose a good supplier because some will have really, really, like, one time I got these motor couplers. I don't see one around me. Uh, I had these motor couplers, you know, the rubber bushing in the middle, and the rubber bushing was cheap, and it was gumming up. So when I installed it, it took me, like, three repairs to discover this, man. So, uh, so unfortunately, people got, got a bad coupler. I didn't, you know. And uh, the, the rubber part was gum. Like, who knows? That can be cheap. I didn't know that can be cheap. But <laughs> so <clears throat> um, motor couplers, agitator dogs, especially when they're on sale. So your parts house, a lot of times they'll have like uh, here we have Fox Appliance parts and they have something called Whirlpool Days. And with Whirlpool Days, they'll have like um, agitator dogs for 99 cents. Now they're getting cheaper. Now they're like 50 cents for a four, pack of four. Um, but OK, so here's my best advice, though. My best advice is when you go on a repair, buy two or three, depending on the cost, right? So let's say you're going to repair to replace a pump. And typically we charge, let's say you charge $150, $200 to replace the pump on a whirlpool direct drive, right? On a front loader is way more, right? And the pump's about 
20 to $25, buy two. That way you always have one in the truck. Um, if you can buy, you know, have have three, you know, one that you're going to use on a repair and then two extra, right? Uh, and then from there, every time you replace, buy one. But, you know, so buy two to three with every repair. And you don't even have to charge a customer extra for that. You don't. You just, you just, you know, take it out of your, your cost. Um, another thing you can do is if you're using used parts. So you got a customer, let's say that um, you give an option. Hey, I got this used part and save you some money, you know, or um, case in point, like a knob, right? A knob could be used. Who cares if it's a new or not, you know, because that's not, especially if it's an accident, something happened uh, and it's not a wear and tear item. You got to replace it. Um, you buy, you put, and you have that part used from your flipping business, then order the new part and keep it, right? Automatically, like I'll do that all the time. Like I'll do, um, <clears throat> uh, I did a pump one time, and actually this is what I did. I did a pump, and it had a sock stuck in it. So the pump was still good. I took the sock out, boom, put it back on, ran good, no leaks, no nothing, and I ordered another pump to keep in my inventory. So that's the way in little stuff like that will constantly grow your inventory. Um, but the best source is used parts, man. The best source, <laughs> you know, get a machine, like even like get a machine off, uh, picking up a free machine, pick them, you know, machine off the curb or something, take parts off of it. <clears throat> Cause not all the parts are bad. So and you'd be amazed how many parts are not wear and tear that, are because of a customer abuse, you know, the machine broke because of customer abuse or they, you know, dropped something on it or whatever. So uh, even okay, another another example is a lid switch. Sometimes lid switches, they'll break open like a clam and all you do is zip tie it, close it back and it's good as new. And that's actually better than a new one because the new ones still haven't, they haven't fixed them yet because like, they, they glue them shut and the glue, glue fails and you, you order a new one and it's the same thing. So you're like, even new ones, I'll put a zip tie. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. Uh, look for X. Okay. Walmart. All right, Prince, I'm checking you out, man. Yeah, thermal fuse. Yeah, lid locks. Okay, BK Rockies, you said working on family. Yeah, that's how we all start, man. We work on family and friends. Uh, and the story of my start is I, um, this is when I was single. And uh, to smooth over this, uh, a, a woman of interest, <laughs> her washer went out. So I fixed it. I had, I had never touched a washer a day in my life, but I knew there was YouTube. And so I went over there, and thank God it was, it was a lid switch. Like now, I look back, like oh, thank God it was the easy. It could be something totally like way harder. I wouldn't know nothing. I had no tools or anything, and it was a lid switch. <laughs> and so it was an easy fix. YouTube video, boom! I was a hero. <laughs> yeah, so yep. So that sparked my my, my career. <laughs> so I motivated a lot of us young men. As young men, most things that motivate us. <laughs> Uh, so let me try to find. Okay, I'm looking at Google for that model number on this Montgomery Ward. Okay, it looks like it's a portable. I think, I think pulling up is a portable. So not exact that exact model number, but it looks like it's a portable. And so if it's a portable, um, Let me go back to the original. Was it spinning? You said. Thank you, BK Rockies. Appreciate the love. Yeah, man, uh, dude, my content, man. I try to like, and also, if you're new in this business, hopefully, my content will be helpful to you, man. Because I try to like uh, simplify everything, and, and like even look at my video on taking off uh, the cabinets for Whirlpool Direct Drives. I, I look, I show you the tabs. I try to. <laughs> Everything that gives you a headache about those things, man, I try to um, show in the um, in the videos. 
Um, so yeah, I try to, and then now I, I got a GoPro now. Not a lot of people are happy about that. Before, before, I, before I was like the one-handed bandit with the camera, trying to do repairs. <laughs> so I got a GoPro now, and uh, and so hopefully it'll, it'll, get, it'll get a lot better. Yeah. Um, and also check out. I got a video on. So I got a video on. Um buying inventory on Facebook. So check that out too if you're new. Um, I got a video on how to buy inventory from Facebook with the lookout for. I'm gonna do more videos like that, especially on Saturdays. I'm gonna try to get in um and do like live buying on Facebook Marketplace because there's certain things you gotta do. Oh, it's about to rain. <laughs> So there's certain things you gotta do. Excuse the garage, y'all. I'm trying to show the shop part of the shop. <laughs> Not the hybrid. All right, so. Um, oh, it's raining. It's trying to rain. Well, you can see it. Um, so yeah, I got a video on showing you how to um, buy on Facebook. I got a video on uh, my most recent one on buying and flipping from A to B, the whole process. I, I, I did a vlog on. Um, I got one on parts, how to buy parts online. It's, it's, and it's actually showing you websites to go to, how to look for parts numbers. Uh, basically, I use like a couple of tools you need to have. Uh, one thing I've always used was SearsPartsDirect.com. Not Sears.com, Sears Parts Direct. I'm going to put that on here. So Sears Parts Direct, you, you go there for your schematics, right? I mean, you can order parts there too if you want to, but uh, you go there to get schematics. So I put model numbers in there, and then it breaks down the machine. Oh, actually, let me try. <laughs> oh, I did that. Right. Yeah, I tried that with the with my man with the. Uh, The model number didn't show up, um, but yeah, you go there for your schematics, and that's and that's how you find your part numbers. And then from there, I go to my um, either Amazon from I'm buying a part from Amazon or go to my part supplier, Fox Appliance here in town. I mean, Encompass too. We have Encompass here too, which is which is a good deal. So, uh, speaking of parts houses, let's talk about accounts. So, if you have an account, should you should you get a credit account with your part supplier? Uh, my answer to that is no. <laughs> no. Um, even if you get with money, uh, is this it's credit, it's borrowing. Um, and it's good to have in a pinch, right? Like if a customer, like if, if like usually I, I'll collect enough from the customer to pay for the part. Like if I, especially if I have to come back, it's like hey, um, you know, if I'm charging. Three hundred dollars and a price of hundred bucks, then I'll usually usually just collect my diagnostic fee, uh, even if that doesn't cover the whole part. That's still some, you know. Or I'll just say I need half down, and then I'll pay, and then you just pay, give me the other half when I come back. Or you can always, and so this is good too, especially if you have a customer that may think they're overpaying or something like that, or if you're charging cheap labor and they don't believe you, you can have them pay for the part directly, and you just go pick it up and say, hey, you pay for the part. And then you just pay my labor once I install it. Um, but credit accounts are trouble because you can, I mean, the first thought is, okay, well, I'll just order the parts. And then as soon as I get paid, I'll pay it back right away. Um, at some point that fails <laughs> or can fail. So just be careful with standing. And then plus it doesn't, it's not credit that helps you. Like, if it went on your actual credit report, that would be that would be helpful, you know, or your business, uh, uh, your your uh, Dun and Bradstreet's number, which is like a social security number for your business, um, that would be awesome. But it doesn't, so it's like you know, it's it's unnecessary. Just pay cash, man. Have a reserve. So, all right, pitcher man, appreciate you, brother. So. 
Uh, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I appreciate everybody. If you have any last minute questions, get it in now. Uh, any last minute donations, I appreciate it. Um, but uh, get it in now. If not, I'll catch you on the next one. I am going to try to have these more often. So these little Q&As. Uh, my next one might have activities involved with it. <laughs> so I can multitask. Um, yeah, and then also I might, you know, just pull some some equipment out here and there and, you know, make it informative. So no problem, Alex. Thanks for joining. Hope it answers your question. Um, yeah, the, 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 a Prince, uh, find my Facebook page, man, 18 appliance. Um, but I th I'm thinking if yours is a compact, um, washer, usually those are prone to have bad boards because those, those things are mostly electronic. Um, there's few hard, there's some hardware on there, but they're mostly electronic. You may be looking at a board, but it is very, very difficult to diagnose, diagnose, diagnose those because of all electronics in them. Um, you know, the old school washers, you know, it's mechanics. It's, hey, a part is bad. And it's easy to identify. But electronics, you got boards and stuff. Everything's on a board. And it's, you know, so. That's my advice there. So, hey, man, you guys have a blessed day. Um, many, many success your way towards your business. Um, for the do it yourself repair people that's here you know the heroes that that decided to save money and try to do the repair themselves uh, we appreciate you too hope my channel is helpful to you and if you haven't subscribed yet guys don't forget to subscribe to the channel i'm doing a lot of i, I basically try to share everything uh, especially now with my i got the gopro a <laughs> small upgrade i could have should have been got one i got the gopro now so i'm recording a lot of uh my repairs in the field um so I got some more coming down the line. I just got to do some editing because, you know, nobody wants to hear and watch a two hour video. Um, so um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for sh thanks for watching. Take care.